green and decent employment opportunities to address the youth. The projects launched by President Museveni include the Green and Decent Jobs for Youth We Work, Advancing Respect for Business and Human Rights in Uganda, the Support for Agriculture Revitalization and Transformation, Green and Inclusive Growth in Uganda's Agri-Food Systems, among others. The focus is boosting female borrowers and micro-enterprises in rural areas. And the final... Museveni was officially launching the third Uganda-EU Business Summit, where he warned European Union states from mixing politics with businesses, noting that a lot of mistakes have been made in the last 600 years as due to this cause. The non-trade barrier created by wrong politics, where people mix politics with business, you need to advise the governments in Europe to get out of that mistake because there is no way you can control the world politically. You can't, you, can't, you can't do it. You shouldn't even attempt to control the world politically. A lot of mistakes have been made in the last 600 years. And this would be my last point where I say down with ideological chauvinism. Down with ideological chauvinism. Don't bring your ideas to impose them on other people. Please stop that. Don't waste our time. President Museveni cautioned entrepreneurs on the three elements responsible for business to thrive, which included production, consumers' ability to pay, and infrastructure. If you have got a need for a product and you have got the ability to pay for it, purchasing power, then equals the demand. demand. If you only have want, no, 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 and, but no ability to pay, then it's not a demand. It is uh, wishes. So the second element of successful business is the consumers who have got the ability to pay, to pay for the products. Now the third element is infrastructure. Infrastructure to link the producer of the good and the service and the consumer. Museven reiterated the need for global development and thus the need for collaboration between Uganda and the European Union. Up to 1980, affluence was only in Western Europe, North America, Canada, Canada and, and USA, and Japan. These were the only parts of the world which had affluence, affluence in the modern sense. The rest of the world was in poverty. But now things have changed a bit. China has gained in affluence, India a bit, and even in the African countries there is some affluence which is coming up. But it's not clearly made a program by all the actors. And I wonder, I say, but everybody would benefit. Why do you want to inhabit the globe with where parts of the people are poor? Because it will limit your own possibilities. The ambassador of the European Union to Uganda, His Excellency Jan Shadek, has lauded the trade relations between Uganda and the EU, which have doubled Uganda's exports in the past two years only. We celebrated then in, in 2022 uh, the Ugandan European trade and investments. But as Honorable Anita said, you also told us that we could do better. You said the Europeans had lagged behind. 
And Your Excellency, I can now report back. And I have good news. Our trade and investment has developed in a remarkable way the last few years. When I look at the trade statistics, I can see a doubling of the Ugandan exports since 2020. And the EU's share of foreign direct investments in Uganda was a year ago more than 40% or 1.2 billion euro or more than four, 5 trillion Ugandan shillings. I think it's difficult to claim some kind of absolute causality, but I would want to believe, Mr. President, that the business forums have contributed somewhat to these impressive figures. Minister of State for Investments Evelyn Anite applauded President Museveni for maintaining peace and stability in the country, which attracts investments. Mr. President, thank you very, very much. I can't say this enough because I know that it is one key factor for anyone to put their money in any economy. And that factor is peace and stability. And you have ably made Uganda peaceful in the region. That's why we have a comparative advantage over the markets which are not peaceful. The other comparative advantage that we have is the fact that, Your Excellency, you've negotiated regional and international markets. You have negotiated a market of 300 million people, and that is the East African common market. Mary Namkose, UBC News. Uh, 